Hello and welcome to worship here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on the fifth Sunday in Lent. A reminder, UTO boxes. I'm not sure when we're going to collect them, but keep adding to them for the season of Lent and perhaps even longer. We we'll welcome them all back heavy and full of hope for the mission of the church. Also, we will have Holy Week services on video for Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. Easter Vigil will be live in the backyard of St. Stephen's Church, Saturday, April 3rd at 7 p.m. We invite those who would like to attend. You will have to wear a mask. We'll be safely distanced, but it uh, will also require you to make a reservation, if you would please, by calling the church office so we have an idea how many to plan for. We're looking for about 40 people as a maximum number. So if you intend to come, please get your name on the list. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Page 355. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. And our canticle is the canticle of penitence found on page 90. Let us pray responsively at the half verse. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners. That they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart. And make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin. Nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. And yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. 
Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please rise in body or in spirit for the praying of Psalm 51, found on page 656 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will pray responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, and in your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and and cleanse cleanse me from from my sin. sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against Against you only have I sinned, and and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been been wicked from from my birth, a a sinner sinner from from my mother's womb. womb. For behold, You look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. You You will will not not despise.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up before the, from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. For people of faith, people of no faith, and everybody in between, this, I think, is a common desire for anybody who's heard the story of Jesus. I want to see him. It could be an intellectual pursuit, a faith pursuit, a broad spiritual pursuit. They want to know, is he really the one that we read about in the Gospels? There's a curiosity in all that. Will he work a miracle for me if I see Jesus? Will Jesus enlighten me, teach me some hidden truth to enrich my soul or to enrich my pocketbook? But as in the Gospel passage from John, and as it is in our life, Jesus does not fit into the boxes of our desires. True to form, there is always something more to meeting Jesus than we can ask or imagine. And Jesus says to them, in a matter of speaking, if you want to see me, look at a grain of wheat. It falls to the ground, it dies, and it bears much fruit. Well, at this point, along with the Greeks who came to meet Jesus, we scratch our heads. I mean, too often we want to think of Jesus as some kind of mystical teacher, a guru, if you will, or in today's parlance, some kind of superhero. But what we get is a grain of wheat that dies. And the way up is the way down. To quote Richard Rohr, a modern-day Franciscan, is this what we want to see? Something humble, something insignificant, maybe something dead. But this is the way of the cross. And we are called to follow and serve in this way of the cross. 
falling to earth, that your life becomes like the grain of wheat, that there is a kind of dying every day we do to ourselves. Every day there is an opportunity to say no to the things that distract us from God and yes to God. But it's even more serious, this falling to earth and dying. St. Benedict said, day by day, remind yourself you're going to die. And this way up by going down to the earth as a humble seed is an invitation to die. But it is also an invitation to your freedom. Not the kind of freedom that we think comes with politics or with wealth or whatever. It is the freedom of giving yourself away. In the service of Christ, this freedom to give up is where we meet our souls. And this is where our souls come to know their true worth and our life comes to know its purpose. And we, in all of this falling and dying and giving new life again, we come to understand that we're infinitely loved. We're not alone. And Christ goes with us, even into death. Death. It's the way of the universe. Because in our death, we give up our souls and our beings. Plants and animals, stars and the brave souls of this world have given themselves up for millennia upon millennia. That the next generation has something to build upon. The humility, the humus of their life gives birth to the next life gives birth to the future, and that's what we're called to. Jesus teaches in verse 25 to hate and lose your life. Well, that doesn't sound very appealing. But trying to hang on to your life is futile. If death is looking for you, death is going to find you. Don't waste your time with those attachments that, that sap your holy energy. It takes a while to figure all that out, where to put your life and where to withdraw it from. But when you find that life, it is the life that begins right here and it never ends but we don't have to wait till the other side. That life begins here and now. Learning from great loves and great sorrows, we learn to love and live more deeply in the image of God. Knowing that Jesus the Christ is with us in our living and in our dying, our suffering is not seen at a distance. He shares our wounds. He comes to us to heal our wounds so that they're not passed on to the next generation. And because sometimes accepting the healing of Christ is dying to old ways, to destructive ways, it may seem like more than we can stand but to fall down as the way up in this world. To be, is to become yourself, stripped of your ego and all the glittering images we keep that prevent us from being holy and who we are. Grains of wheat with life in us. 
That's who Jesus said we, he was and who we all are. People want to see Jesus. They still want to meet Jesus today. I mean, the problem is sometimes we who bear his name don't make him all that attractive. But if our life is one of falling to the ground of humility, of service, not being afraid to fall short and be a fool, to bear our souls, we will bring a bit of Jesus' life to the world. In the Old Testament that Will read, Jeremiah talked about a new covenant, a new relationship with God. And I think that's what people want in this world. They want a relationship with God. Not the one that comes with restrictions and laws and can't do this and can't do that. But I think it frightens people when you say, if you want a relationship with God, you have to die to yourself. But you weigh that against the way the world wants God to be, of one of power, of shouting, of excluding. There has to be a better way. I think folks want to meet Jesus. They want to see Jesus. They want to sit with him, eat with him. Well, the truth is, you and I might be all they get. Fall humbly to the ground. Amen. Let us stand, and on page 358, join in the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all that and is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the, With the Father, Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. May we have the courage to be Jesus' disciples and to walk in the way of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. May we strive for justice and peace among all peoples, respect the dignity of every human being.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. May we see the new life in the seeds that are growing. We th give thanks for the new life surrounding us in our gardens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Today, may we pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, David, our rector, for the rector's search committee, for the bishop's search committee, for our governor and legislature, for our president and Congress, May we seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Today we pray for Jen Kevin, Jennifer, Pat, Nicholas, Jack, Richard, Candy, Ed, Tara, and those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray today for Josh Holden, Nevada McGregor, Malin Nichols, Betty Bufford, and those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we, we may delight, delight in your, your will, will and walk, walk in your, your ways to the to glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you also with you.
understand. And let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will will be done. done. On On earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us us today today our daily daily bread. bread. Forgive Forgive us our our sins, sins, as we we forgive forgive those who sin against us. us. Save Save us from from the time of trial, trial, and deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. For the the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and and the the glory are yours, yours, now now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. seated. And in birthdays and anniversaries this week, On March 15th, Emily Wettstein celebrated her birthday, and since I was there, I can tell you she's 33 years old. (laughs) And Mike Mahoney on March 17th, Julie Strait and Penny Stubbs on March 18th. And Leslie and Glenn Haddon celebrated 48 years on March 17th. Congratulations. Let us stand for the blessing. Go from here in peace. Remember the poor. Be kind and gracious to one another. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God and Mother of us all be upon you and remain with you. From this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.